Welcome back to another TTRP. That's a Transformers Talk Raw podcast on YouTube and Spotify. I'd like to thank all you bots and conettes for joining me again on this weekend edition of Transformers Talk Raw. That's TTRP. You can check those various links, by the way, in the description below. That's going to take you to all kinds of cool stuff, including our Facebook group, our Twitter, where you can follow T-Talk there. You can take T-Talk with you on the go on Spotify. Thanks again so much, guys. And the subject for this weekend is going to be is the legacy commander class motormaster worth it is he worth our hard-earned dollars and i was thinking about this one because i actually just acquired motormaster this week and uh you know at first before i had him actually in hand i was like well that is too much for just a voyager sized and in bot mode he is the size of a modern day voyager and we're paying that premium commander class price um you know, after shipping and taxes and everything, we paid about $110. Now, after taxes, even if you find them in the store, you're going to pay about 90 So that's not too far off. That is a premium price. So are, is those dollars being put to good use? Are we seeing the return of quality on our financial investments here? Because I know that, you know, a true collector doesn't even really look at these like investments because they enjoy them. And it's, you know, it's for display, in my opinion, anyway. It's just for the fun of having. It's the nostalgia. It's the love of the brand, the Transformers, of course. But Motormaster in and himself, um, you know, having him in hand, it actually changed my mind a good bit on him. Um, he has, in, in, in robot mode, first of all, I thought initially in robot mode that he was off somewhat from the tune accuracy, especially below the waist in the die area. I thought he was a bit off from what we see on the screen. But, you know, looking at some animation cells even closer, I think he's pretty dang spot on. I mean, in almost every way, guys. And I think Hasbro really knocked it out of the park. If tune accuracy is your thing, and it's not everybody's thing, because I know that uh, toy accuracy, G1 toy accuracy, is important for a lot of folks. I know Hasbro was focusing on that for a little while. I know with their Combiner War sets, specifically what comes to mind is the Computron and the Hasbro Technobots. They focus more on G1 toy accuracy as opposed to Takara and the G1 tune accuracy. But I digress. Motormaster nails it as far as G1 tune accuracy. And uh, even, even you know, but let's just looking at Motormaster, not taking into account Menasaur yet. Um, in bot mode, this guy is, and, and I know that there's a hundred reviews out there, and that's not really what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to analyze whether or not he's actually worth it. You know, that money that we're spending. A lot of people do have some complaints about the sword, uh, about uh, the gun. That his sword should be bigger. Well, I mean, my, my counterpoint to that is if his sword were bigger, it wouldn't look right in Motormaster's hands It's himself. It would look right in Menasaur's hands. It would look almost comical in Motormaster's hands. Uh, so it's they, they tried to size it, in my opinion, so it would look right, you know, kind of good in both their hands. And it does. It's a little too big in Motormasters, and it's a little too small in Minosaurs. But I think it's a, it's a good balance. And if we recall the G1 toy, that sword wasn't overly big in Minosaurs' hands either. So it's it's a sweet spot, guys, and they're not going to include two swords for us. Um, however, if you want a bigger sword, there are options available. Uh, very Various uh, sellers on eBay, for example, have some uh, there's a couple of them that come to mind now that I've seen that are offering uh, 3D printed or customized swords for our legacy Menasaur. As far as the gun goes, I don't personally have a problem with it. Uh, I know it, you know, it's kind of flat and it's part of the trailer, but it's putting to use some of those parts. They're trying to use all those parts, you know, because they know that the people are going to complain. The more parts that are left over, they, they, I think that Hasbro is very in tune with the fans and their, uh, concerns in that regard. Uh, so, and, and I think for what it is, it's very serviceable. In, in uh, Motor uh, Menasaur's hands, it actually looks pretty good to me, in my opinion. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments, by the way. Feel free to let me know below and hit that like button, uh, guys. It actually helps me out a great deal and consider supporting the channel via our Patreon. That link's also in the description below. Uh, but yeah, I think the ratchet joints are great. I, if I had one small gripe about the entire figure would be um, the white paint on Motormaster's arms is a little bit prone to chipping. You know, I think I had a fingernail accidentally hit it while transforming it the first time, and it took off a little spigot of paint. That said, 
uh, I still think it's worth it. And I don't say that about every figure. I mean, you, a lot of you guys know me. You know that I'm a complainer. I gripe and I moan about a lot of new stuff. I'm not one of those guys that's all on board every time a new figure comes out or a new version of the character comes out. But in this case, with Motormaster, I think he hands down destroys the Combiner Wars one. Um, and I think the Menasaur does too. I think it will be very difficult for Hasbro to continue to do Combiners in this style because with just Gestalt's like Menasaur and Superion, um, if you look at them in the cartoon, they're basically giant robots with vehicles attached to them. As opposed to when you get into the other combiners like Abominus and Computron, they are their limbs are composed of those creatures and or vehicles. In other words, the arm is the creature in the vehicle as opposed to it just having a car on top of the arm, if you guys know what I'm saying. Also, I don't see, you know, if they give us um, aerial bots in the style of the of the Stunicons, like they did with Legacy, or like they're doing with Legacy, if they do Silverbolt, he's just going to have to be, in order for them to get the framework of Superion, he's just going to be have to be that back half of that, of Silverbolt's plane mode or something like that. They're going to have to do some trickery. But, but I digress, going back to Motormaster, um, I do think he's worth it, and I know that's an echo chamber as far as all the reviewers go. They they like it. Most of them do. Uh, there's a couple I've watched that don't, um, but, you know, you kind of knew which ones were and which ones weren't, weren't going to uh, like him from the get-go if you know your reviewers. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted with the with the sculpt of it. The, the, you know, both the head sculpts are pretty dang perfect to me. He scales well. And even if you don't think that the Menosaur scales great, again, on eBay, there's actually a seller. I want to say it's TF Lab, Transformer Lab, that actually adds an inch of height to Menosaur by including a peg that just slides right on uh, above the knee and creates a new um, slot for the leg assembly to go into. But basically, it makes Menosaur go from 12 and a half inches to 13 and a half inches. And I think that might, and it's like 10 bucks shipped guys. You can't beat that with a stick. And I'm not affiliated with TF lab whatsoever, but you can't beat that with a stick. And if you want your Minnesota to be a little bit taller and I'm considering it, go ahead and go to eBay and pick that up. I'm not going to post a link to it, but he's easy to find on eBay. Just type in legacy Minnesota upgrade and it'll pop up. But uh, <clears throat> it's very, I think it's pretty cool. And there's all kinds of upgrades for it. I think there's, like I said, there's a new gun, there's a new sword, um, I think there's pieces that can fit on the Motormaster's cab or a trailer. And that's another point of contention with a lot of fans that I've seen or reviewers that I've seen is that they say the trailer is too short. Um, I think that they, it, it being what it is, it had to be that, that length. And I think it, they did a very good job, even on the trailer. Yeah, it would, it would have been nice to see a little continuation of the purple paint go throughout the entire trailer. But man, that is really grasping at straws and reaching, considering everything they've given us with Motormaster. I mean, he is heavy. If you throw that thing at, at you know, something, it's going to damage that something, that trailer. It is, it is thick and heavy. And we can't say the same about the leader class Optimus. You know, that thing's light and flimsy, his trailer. So I really think they did a great job, guys, uh, to be honest. But that's just my opinion. Again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. We're going to be back on Monday. Keep your eyes open for all the shorts we continue to upload. God bless you guys. Tell all our one, and I hope you have a great weekend. Catch you later. This podcast is made possible in part thanks to the amazing support of our patrons. Click the link to our Patreon in the description below if you'd like to help keep T-Talk Raw going strong. Thank you.